This is Mr. Martin. These are the video notes for Precalculus Honors, Section 5.2. We're going to be talking about uh, verifying identities. We've talked a little bit about this already. So when we talk about verifying identities, let's uh, take a look at something from algebra. So if f of x is equal to g of x, we say that f and g are identically equal or that f of, g, f of x equals g of x is an identity. So if these two things are equal, it's an identity. So for example, x plus 3 squared is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9. We would say that that's an identity. So when we're doing trig identities, some things that you want to uh, keep in mind when you're working on these, some common procedures. We're going to work with one side, and we normally choose the more complicated side. We're going to use algebraic techniques to simplify the side you choose. And the, some of these techniques are writing in terms of sine and cosine, factoring, so we've got difference of squares, we'll use a lot, difference of cubes, we'll use a little, sum of cubes, we use a little. So you may want to uh, go back and review what those are. Uh, finding common denominators, which we've done a little bit, and multiplying by conjugates, so you could either multiply the numerator or the denominator by its conjugate. So remember, if I have cosine theta plus 1, the conjugate is going to be cosine theta minus 1. So the goal is to make the side you choose look like the other side of the equation. Use as many of the techniques that you need to so that you can uh, get this to work and always keep your goal in mind that will give you an idea of what technique to use. So let's take a look at a bunch of examples. We want to verify this identity so I'm going to start working on this side. I'm going to try and make this whole side equal sine squared x. And if you have your uh, list of fundamental identities handy it will help uh, but you do want to start memorizing these. So I know that I have an identity that involves secant squared theta. It's one of my Pythagorean identities. And I know tan squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. And one of the things that we'll do a lot is we'll, we'll rearrange our fundamental identities. So if I subtract 1 from both sides on this, I'll get tan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta minus 1. So these two are equivalent. There's, it's still the same identity. It's just rearranged a little bit. But I've rearranged it so that it matches my problem. So now I see that this, secant squared theta minus 1, which I have in my problem, is actually equal to tan squared theta. So I'm going to substitute this for tan squared theta over secant squared theta. And again, I'm trying to make it equal sine squared theta. And I know that tangent is equal to sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. And I know secant is 1 over cosine. So a little shortcut that you can use is anytime you move a trig function from the numerator or denominator or the other way around, it just changes to its reciprocal function. So if I take this and I move it up to the numerator, it's going to become cosine squared theta over 1. And then I see that these are going to cancel out, and I'm left with sine squared theta is equal to what we were trying to make it equal to, sine squared theta, so that checks. All right, as usual, make sure you pause the video, write down your questions if you have any, and ask me the next time you see me in class. All right, number two. We want to verify this identity, so I notice here that I have two fractions, and normally when I have fractions, I'm going to add or subtract them as necessary. Sometimes you'll start a problem and you won't have an idea of how to do it, or you may have some idea, or you may have a couple ideas, and you're not which, sure which one will work. Sometimes there's multiple ways to do it. Sometimes the way you try it won't work, and you'll have to try another way. So the more practice you get, the, the better you will become at uh, verifying these identities. So I'm going to add these. So I'm going to use my smiley face method for adding. So I'm going to multiply up and to the left. So I have 1 times 1 plus sine alpha. 
which is 1 plus sine alpha, and then plus, because we're adding the fractions, and then multiply up to the right. So 1 minus sine alpha, and then all over, and I'm going to multiply these two together, so that if I uh, FOIL that out, that's going to be a difference of two squares. It's going to be 1 minus sine squared alpha. So I see in the numerator that I have sine alpha minus sine alpha, so those cancel out, and I have 1 plus 1, so that's 2. And then on the bottom, remember I have sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha is equal to 1. Again, I can rearrange by moving that to the other side, so I get cosine squared alpha is equal to 1 minus sine squared alpha. And y you don't necessarily have to do this work. I just want to show it so you know where I'm getting everything. So now I see that this is equal to cosine squared alpha. I'm going to substitute. Normally our simplest form is not in a fraction. So then I'm going to move this up to the numerator. Again, that little shortcut way of thinking about it. And it will become 2 secant squared alpha and that's equal to what we want it to be secant squared alpha so that checks alright again pause anytime you need to next we want to verify the identity so again when I see a whole bunch of squared stuff with ones I think about my Pythagorean identities so I know that this is equal to secant squared x and I know that this is equal to the opposite of sine squared x. And then secant is 1 over cosine x times negative sine squared x over 1. So I get negative sine squared x over cosine squared x. And that's negative tan squared x, which is what I wanted it to equal, negative tan squared x. So that one checks. All right, moving on to the last one. And keep in mind that the examples that I'm covering in these notes are not all inclusive. So there will be lots of other problems for you to work out that I'm not going to directly cover in these notes. But again, with practice, you'll figure out how to do them all. The more you do, the better you'll become at them. Um, and it's always a good idea to look through the uh, example problems in the book as well. All right, so this one's probably the uh, most difficult one I've got here. So both of these sides look kind of complicated. I'm going to start with the left side, and I'm going to use the technique of changing everything in terms of sine and cosine. So I know that secant is 1 over cosine. So I have 1 over cosine x. Tangent is sine x over cosine x. Now that I've got two fractions, I'm going to add these. So I'm going to multiply up to the left, so that's cosine x, plus add up to the right. I have cosine x, sine x. And then multiply my denominators, so I have cosine squared x. So it's just a shortcut for finding common denominators and adding. Um, in this case, they already have a common denominator. So I probably just could have added them, but I'm going to keep going anyway. So I've got, uh, I'm going to factor out a cosine x in the numerator. So I'm left with 1 plus sine x over cosine squared x. So that is going to cancel with one of those. So I'm left with 1 plus sine x over cosine x. And Here's where things get a little bit tricky, because I have 1 plus sine x over cosine x, and I'm trying to figure out how to get it to be cosine x over 1 minus sine x. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply by 1 minus sine x over 1 minus sine x. So that's my conjugate. So on the top, I'm going to get 1 minus sine squared x. That's a difference of two squares. And on the bottom, I'm going to have cosine x times 1 minus sine x. All right, And I know that this is equal to cosine squared x over cosine x times 1 minus sine x. 
and I can see that this will cancel with that so I'm left with cosine x over 1 minus sine x which is equal to what I wanted it to equal so that checks out so I kinda went through this a little bit differently than I had in my notes but you know that just again shows that there's more than one way to do these problems um, as long as you can verify it at the end uh, there's not one way that's more correct than the other you know it's just whatever you see and whatever path you started takes you so um, make sure you do lots of practice and uh, if you had any questions make sure you ask me the next time and uh, we'll see you in the next video